How's it going today? Not bad. Well, are you heading inside? Yeah, we're heading into the hills here now. I suppose this is a regular occurrence for you, is it? Oh, we managed to make a scatter trip in there over the winter. Well, I, uh, I haven't seen so many snowmobiles in one area before, like I have it here. We've only been gone a couple hours. Well, there's one point there last year, Jamie, what, there was 100 skidoos in there? Really close to that, yeah. Yeah, 100 right. in there at the base of the hill. How many is in your party? There's four of us. Four of you? Yeah. We've seen some big parties come up. Five? Maybe a dozen people come up in, in yeah, different groups. Yeah, it's always sir. like this. It's always, uh, really busy. Yeah. It's like a highway for Pete's sake. Yeah, we got the... Uh, our machine's five years old and we got 17,000 kilometers on <laughs> So you're using it, yeah, for sure. You'll have to watch this on TV now. You watch home. yourself on TV? Go home and tell your mom and dad you're going to be on TV. What channel? <laughs> oh, I thought you'd watch my show all the time. <laughs> Uncle Bob will show you what channel it is. Uncle Bob will make sure that you get to see it. <laughs> Newfoundland Sportsman with Dwight Blackwood and Paul Amundsen. Brought to you by your Newfoundland Toyota dealers. Play it smart. Get Toyota quality priced right. These local Arctic Cat dealers. Arctic Cat, world-class snowmobiles. Air Labrador. For convenience, comfort, and service, this is your airline. And Action Toy Store. Toys for the outdoor motoring enthusiast. I guess uh, ever since I can remember, we've always had a snowmobile. Or whatever, gone to our cabin at Pitchcut Lake and uh, always enjoyed for a weekend to come to go snowmobiling. And it's even the same now as even working at a snowmobile dealership and hearing stuff all day long, you know, people's problems or complaints or even how people feel about it. I still can't usually wait to get out of work to come home, just go for a ride for an hour, forget about everything, or even on Sundays, just pack everything up and head for the hills, let's go for a ride. Newfoundland's west coast. With an annual snowfall of over 16 feet, this is serious snowmobile country. White and Paul will travel by Air Labrador to Deer Lake. From there, it's west along the Trans-Canada Highway to the Cornerbrook area, where they'll experience some of the best snowmobiling this province has to offer. You'll also get some professional tips on proper storage and maintenance of your machine. Then it's on to the Upper Humber Rod and Gun Club for Rack Night, a look at the biggest and the best big game trophies in the province. On west, on the west coast, we're lucky. Uh, within a 10-minute drive of Corner Brook, we've got 500 miles of woods roads. 500 miles. 500 miles.
My kids love this. Oh, yeah. You can see how family can really get hooked on snowmobiling. I mean, you've got such great countryside, you've got such great snowmobiling conditions. You can take the kids, you can take your grandmother, you can take your mother, anybody at all. Out in conditions like this, and you have a ball, just a ball. The main thing about this, you've got to dress warm. I mean, it's useless going out in any type of outdoor activity unless you get the proper gear on. Proper layer gear, warm boots, warm mitts, warm helmet. If you don't have the gear, it's just as well to stay home. We probably have about minus seven, minus eight degrees today, which is not too bad, but you still have to be warm. The thing that I find good in these machines, really, really good, are the hand thumb warmers. Even if you've got a good pair of mitts, after driving for two or three or four hours, you've got a tendency to get cold thumbs, cold hands. Pick the switch, put the hand warmer on, and within about two or three minutes, it's warmed up. And actually, believe it or not, you almost feel like taking your mitts off. So that's a great optional feature with all these Hardicap machines. The Newfoundland Federation of Snowmobile Clubs is being formed to help guide the industry here in Newfoundland as it develops. All the other provinces have a federation in place and it just provides a voice for all the clubs come together to help deal with the government in terms of regulations, uh, to help get uh, insurance for the, uh, the uh, club trails and that sort of thing. We're very fortunate in Newfoundland in that we can really have two products. Uh, other provinces and virtually anywhere else on the continent you really are confined to trail systems, but here in Newfoundland we have uh, so much publicly owned land, 90 odd percent publicly owned land, so we have that backcountry experience. But we don't have the groomed trails and that's what the tourists really need. They need the reassurance of groomed trails before they'll come here. And that's going to be the, the main push of the trailway, as they're calling it, where they're taking the old rail bed right across the province. It's now under the parks division of the provincial government, and that will be turned into a trail from one end to the other. The Viking 1000 is really intended to showcase the province and, and the snowmobiling that we have here. It's two events, really. One is an international race, 20 teams of three people. They will be going here from Marble Mountain right up to St. Anthony and back down over six days. The entrance for that's going to be about $9,000. They will be big sponsored teams, although there are some local teams around now. Our first team, in fact, was out of Stephenville. The second part of the event is uh, more of a recreational ride. We'll take 50 tourists that come in, we'll break them up into groups of 10, and we'll spend six days going up the Northern Peninsula as far as St. Anthony. Uh, so again, it highlights our strength here in Newfoundland, which is late snowmobiling. We don't really hit our stride till March. That's when the best snowmobiling starts, March and April, as opposed to January and February in places like Ontario. So the, the real purpose of it is to get people over, and that will launch tourism here for, for snowmobiling. And the snowmobilers are a high expenditure crowd. They can't carry much with them. They bring their wallets, and they just come to spend. If we can have a fraction of what they've gotten in other provinces, we'll, we'll be thrilled. I know there are, uh, it's not just accommodations and restaurants, but it's uh, people at gas stations. There, there are gas stations in Ontario that can fill up to 2,000 machines in a day in the winter. And if we could get a tenth of that down here, then the economic impact is just incredible. I guess one of the best things about uh, being on the west coast is that pretty well anyone can leave from the backyard and go snowmobile. And with all the snow we got here, you know, it's easy to get out from your backyard and you can go anywhere. And uh, as you can see, there's lots of people out here snowmobiling. So what's the big attraction besides the scenery? Oh, <laughs> well, you get a few fellas racing up the side of the hill there. 
see a scattered machine uh, demolished come under when they can't make it up and they jump off and see it rolling back the hill. I guess this is only for the brave at heart, is it? This is not for everybody. Oh, for the mad, that's all. Are you one of those? Oh, no. <laughs> not likely. Are you cold? No. Does he let you drive? You're too small to drive yet, are you? He's, he's, he's a co-pilot. Pilot. He lets you drive. He lets you drive, does he's he? He's a co-pilot, right? Sir, you have a fine selection of machines here. Thank you, Paul. Of course, you have the Articat snowmobiles. Yes. And of course, you represent uh, a number of lines. Yeah, we represent uh, Kawasaki, of course, uh, Suzuki, and as well as Harley Davidson. So you've got the snowmobiles, the ATVs, the watercraft, the motorcycles. We got her covered. And of course, the Harley. I was looking at the Harley earlier. That is one beautiful machine. Absolutely, sir. Premium motorcycle line, and uh, when you get an opportunity to summer, come on in, maybe you can go for a ride. That's what I'll do. Of course, it's not summer, it's winter. That's right. But we're here to talk about a snowmobiling. You're going to give us some tips on how to maintain your machine. Absolutely. You know, if you've got a machine like this that's obviously been stored all summer and I'm taking off for my first trip of the year, I must have to do some maintenance. What kind of things should I be doing? That's true, Paul. We should look at what you did last year at the end of the season, how you stored your snowmobile. Not a good idea, just bring it in and park it. No, not a good idea, Paul. It's important that you do what's recommended in your service plan. What kind of things should I have done? Well, first thing we'd recommend, and what's also, as I mentioned in your owner's manual, is put some fuel stabilizer in your fuel. Mm -hmm. And from there, we would fog the engine down. After that, we drain the remaining fuel that's in your carburetor. Rick, that sounds a bit complicated. I'm no mechanic. Can a regular guy do that kind of stuff, that kind of maintenance? Sure, they can do most of the desurfacing, uh, Paul, but uh, some of the small steps that you could do is uh, stabilize the fuel that's in your gas tank. After you've filled your gas tank, oh, you pour the recommended amount of fuel stabilizer in it. That doesn't look so difficult. No, nope. this... Um, Keeps your fuel uh, in good standing. I guess all of the dealers would have the local oh, added. Yes, the they would. Uh, the next thing you would do is uh, start your engine, let it warm up, let it idle, uh, spray some storage oil in through the throat of your carburetor, and this lubricates your crank bearings and the rest of your engine. I guess basically that's just for corrosion. Yes. Oh, okay. In case of condensation. The next thing you would do is. Turn the carburetor on the side and drain the float bowl. This takes the small amount of oil, gas out of your carburetor. So you want all, all, of the, uh, all of the fuel drained? Out of the carburetor, yes. Out of the carburetor. Yes. Okay. The next thing you would probably do is take your spark plugs out and pour some oil down in on top of the, the pistons. This lubricate, lubricates the rings and cylinder walls. I guess, uh, sir, this would be just again for uh, corrosion or whatever. Very important. Yeah, it'll re keep your rings from uh, corroding and seizing, and also, like Brick said, it'll keep your cylinder walls lubricated. So far, this looks easy enough. After you've uh, poured oil in on top of your pistons, you should turn them over a few times by hand. Okay. And this, this I guess, moves this it will around. move the oil yeah. around in your in your cylinders. Okay. The next thing you should do, if it's, if you have an electric start or a fuel injected model you should remove your battery. The battery has to be charged for an eight hour period, once a month. And you also have to check on the battery fluid levels and keep that topped up. So it's not good enough just to disconnect the battery and let it run down and charge it up at the first of the season? No, it'll sulfate and you'll have to replace your battery. So you don't want a dead battery hanging around, you want to recharge it and recharge it? Absolutely. Okay. Also remove your drive belt and just store it anywhere, but you don't keep it on your clutches. Clean your clutch sheaves. Well, this all seems fairly fairly easy to do, and something that, you know, the regular the regular rider can do on his own. Yeah, the average consumer of Paul shouldn't have a problem with this. Just snap right off there, yeah. Most of these instructions are in your owner's manual. Well, I guess if they have some trouble, they can always go to the uh, local dealer, Absolutely. ask them how it's done, get, get some hands-on experience with it. Something I'm not sure about, they should contact a local dealer in the area, and I'm sure they'd be only too happy to help them. Paul, there's also a number of uh, grease nipples 
on most of the snowmobiles. There's one on the speedo drive down below the, the drive clutch, or the driven clutch. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also some in the rear suspension. And they should be? They should be all greased before you put your machine away. Also, Paul, in the rear suspension, there's a series of uh, grease nipples in various locations, but also in the rear shock, you have a chrome uh, shaft here that should be greased too to stop it from uh, forming rust on it. Of course, Rick, you can use the manual to locate the grease fittings in the suspension as well. Yes, you can, Paul. Thank you very much, Rick. You're welcome. Cyril, I've been a good boy. I've stored my machine properly, I've done all the things I'm supposed to do. It's the first day of the season I'm taking my machine out. What should I do? Do it a visual inspection. Adjust your track tension, make sure you got plenty of oil in your oil injection, and get lots of fuel. And that's it. Ready to go. Seems, seems rather easy. What if I'm doing my own maintenance? How often should I bring in for professional? <laughs> well, at least once a year, Paul. By the way, Paul, your snowmobile's ready. I think we should get ready to leave. <laughs> for the outdoor enthusiast, Newfoundland and Labrador offers excitement second to none. And the Newfoundland Sportsman magazine brings that excitement home to you. Subscribe now and begin enjoying interesting and informative features with exceptional photography, focusing on every aspect of our great outdoors. Order now and receive six exciting issues a year for the low price of only $21.35. Or subscribe for two years and get 12 issues for only $38.04 and save 25% off newsstand prices. The Newfoundland Sportsman magazine, outdoors at its best. I say, I say this is a, that's a minority here. These must be big, are they? Well, in Newfoundland, we've got two species of rabbit. You've got a snowshoe here, and you've got an Arctic here. Now, Arctic here is not located in very many places on the island. You've got some up around Gander, you've got some up around the Northern Peninsula, and obviously, I would say you've got some here. But they're big tracks. Oh, they yeah. must be big, big rabbits, are they? Anywhere from six to ten pounds. Just up, they're all over the place. You see them all around trees. And this guy came across and operated. We're no big distance from the highway. Now, we haven't seen a big abundance of rabbit tracks coming on the trail. No. It's only when we got in close to the park that we saw any quantity. But you can see they've got all these young alders. That's what they're feeding on during the winter time. So you got great food here. And obviously, there's quite an abundance of rabbits. Coming out from the trees here. Chasing a rabbit. There's a rabbit track there, too. Oh, you came right up? Yeah, man, this is amazing. Look at them all. I mean, it looks like somebody's been up there walking around. Well, this is all fresh tracks. We had snow last night, as you can see. This had to be made within the last 12 hours. But see, the reason they're up here, see all the young trees? Mm -hmm. The tops are eating off every single one. Yeah, you so can they're see feeding it here, well. Now, this I mean, are, it must be hard for them, too, though, I mean, with all the snow in the woods, even for a big animal, to oh get yeah. around. I mean, because on the west coast, they get so much well, snow. Look at the problem they had in Gander last year. I mean, around the community of Gander, they must have had at least 40 moose. It wouldn't move. Wherever a row was plowed, that's where the moose stayed because they couldn't get in the woods. They go in the snow that's too deep, they belly up, which means their legs sink down and then they're held up in their belly. Sometimes, a lot of times, snow that deep, moose are going to perish. And they had a lot of problems in Gander last year. So but, I guess they're out on wood, wood roads like this and that kind of stuff. That's right. Look how deep that is compared to your track and my track. Yeah. You know, it goes down about two feet, whereas you and I are sitting on top of the ground pretty well. Yeah. That's the way of them. I mean, you're 500, 600. We've seen animals over on the west coast that have been over a thousand pounds. Yep, just big a, animals. Just incredible. But there's but a lot of them here, though. Isn't there? Sure is. But what's more incredible is that these animals last through the cold temperatures. They last through the deep snow in Cornerbrook. You've got snow up to 16 feet in places. Well, I mean, this is the first snowfall they've had out here, a major one. Yeah. And I mean, these are almost buried now. So I mean, they'll be, be buried. In another week or so. That's right. They'll have to dig them out, I guess. Yeah. Well, the tracks or eat are, else. Yeah. Well, they'll go over the top trees, eh? You know, they'll they'll yeah. eat whatever they can eat. That's in the form of a tree. Mm. Let's get on back, eh? A lot of them around, wasn't it? Yeah, for sure. I'd like to offer a special welcome to everyone who have come from all over Newfoundland to attend this uh, activity, this big bowl uh, competition. And especially like to welcome the uh, 
gentlemen, Paul and Dwight from uh, Newfoundland Sportsman TV show. Comes on Sundays on NTV at 1 o'clock. We're going to uh, make some presentations for the winners of the uh, different, uh, into different categories. And we're also going to draw for uh, our rifle and uh, some other prizes later on. The first one we're going to, uh, to call upon is uh, Mr. Roy Curlew. Ray Curlew, who uh, won the prize for the most unusual trophy, and he's going to win a $20. Uh... Hey, Ray, who's got number for you? Yeah. <laughs> $20 gas certificate from Ultramar. Thank you, Ray. And he's going to win a $20 uh, certificate from West Coast Decor. Congratulations, Carl. And first place in the moose category goes to Gay Pilgrim from St. Carol's. Some tie down straps from Williams Building Supplies. Uh, from box sales and service, and a cap from Deer Lake Ultramar, and a, a plaque as well, and a case of coke. Yeah. Well, um, we just was riding around on the roads, and um, my husband spotted two down in the woods, and uh, of course he swore, and uh, he said, look, yeah, he's two great big ones down there, and well, we got out, and he come around the truck, and just shot, like to see we're running and getting ready to run away. And everybody fell down and another one ran away. First place in beer goes to uh, James Wells from Cornerbrook. And he's winning a sleeping bag from AFCO, a wine kit from the Brew Supply. James, hang on, now we get to Gonna win a plaque from the Rod and Gun Club. I'm going to win some Coke product and caps from Billi uh, Williams Building Surprise and Deer Lake uh, Ultramar. His, his uh, beer skull meets the requirement to get in the Boone and Crockett Book of Awards. Congratulations. Congratulations, Jim. Thank you very much. You've got a big black bear. Beautiful. Now, this even qualified for Boone and Crockett record. Right, right, right. Tell me a little story now about how you managed to bag this one. Boy, I done a lot of hunting for him, yeah. and I, I guess I had him come in three weeks, and I'd say eat a hundred pound of donuts, Is that right? at least, at least. I had to get the second fellow to go to the bakery shops or wherever he was picking it up for him. Anyway, I got a shame going back and forth, and I couldn't get him, but eventually he, he slipped, and I was on his slip. Is that right? And I went and left home and uh, went in over the hill. I said, I'm not even going to take the gun up over the hill. The fellow was with me. He said, you better. Well, I said, boy, I said, if the trap is set off, I said, we're going to take her away or if he's not around or the snare. And I said, uh, you carry the gun. I said, no, walk with you. No, he said, I'm not taking the gun. So when I got up, I see this big stump waving back and forth. I said, there's something going on. Everything is cleaned up here. I said, that stump is moving. I went to look up. Here he was looking at me. And uh, well, it was only one shot of the 30 was game, game over for him, yeah, you know. Right. 545 pounds with the cut taken out. Go on, boy. Yeah, we had to clean them because it took four of us to roll them up on a sheet of plywood in the back of the truck. I had to get help back there, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's more like it. That's more like it. There you go, you got the hold of That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> this way is more than the moose they shot the fall. This is a, this is a rack which was... Uh, Taken by uh, Cordell McKay from Deer Lake, and I'm sure he'll let uh, Dwight hold it for a short amount of time. Congratulations, Dwight. Thank you very much. Newfoundland Sportsman. Brought to you by your Newfoundland Toyota dealers. Play it smart. Get Toyota quality priced right. These local Arctic Cat dealers. Arctic Cat, world class snowmobiles. Air Labrador. For convenience, comfort, and service, this is your airline. And Action Toy Store, toys for the outdoor motoring enthusiast. While on the west coast of Newfoundland, cast and crew of Newfoundland Sportsmen stayed at Marble Mountain Cabins. 
Marble Mountain Cabins, the best at the base. The uh, competition's pretty stiff with all the boats out here. Yeah. Right? I'd say half the people from O'Donnell's are out here to hunt today. Good shot, good shot. Jeez, you got the... <laughs> oh my, oh my. That's five for me. So One for you. Who's keeping score? One for you. Who's keeping score? Can I, can I take your quote if you don't use it? Sure, I don't get a chance to shoot <laughs> sharp before I get the gun up, bang, bang, bang. If you're mile it? away, you're shooting them. This is what you do when you're learning. You get in front of the boat, <laughs> get in front of the boat, get the first shot, the clearest shot. That's what he did to me last time out. I learned quickly. clean his visor and of course while he stopped cleaning his visor we all left Before and even though where to go <laughs> so here we go well that's what happened the visor came <laughs> off when I went when I went down the garden to turn around the visor came off so I stopped to fix that I came up I saw you go the last guy go through the woods but I didn't know which way you turned so I figured I'd wait there you'd come back I guess the trails in the stall weren't deep enough for you to track us. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of them down there. I actually went over and went across the highway to do a bit of scouting, went over there, and there was trails going that way until I came back. I'll go around a bit. And... Well, I tell you, you're one and of you a... You never leave until you got the last guy. You're one of a kind. <laughs> <laughs>